So in this video, we're going to continue with the application of derivatives, looking at the Jacobian. All right. So we'll start with a quick recap of what we learned in topic two when we looked in matrices, where we were basically uh, learning that we can, we can also use matrices to solve for the unique solution when we have linear equations. So basically, we saw how we, we use the determinant to test for consistence, test for functional independence, which are both critically important when we want to ascertain the presence of a unique solution. And we also use the determinant to test for singularity. Right. So the major conclusion around this was that the determinant has to not be equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, then we can conclude otherwise. All right. So now the question is, how then do we test for consistence and functional dependence if we are working with nonlinear equations, right? So the answer basically lies in the use of the Jacobian, which works with partial derivatives. So with uh, the Jacobian, we are saying that we are still using um, the matrix algebra, uh, but in this regard, we also apply partial derivatives in trying to ascertain whether um, there is a consistent and uh, linear dependence in our function, right? So as an example, if you had given two functions, so from these two equations, we can see that equation two is not linear, it's non-linear because of the fact that x1 is raised to the power of two as well as x2 is raised to the power of two. So looking at this, we cannot uh, put the two functions in matrix notation in a linear way that we learned of uh, establishing our AX equals to D equation. So how then are we going to test for um, nonlinear dependence or consistence? Right. So what we're going to do is we'll take partial derivatives uh, with respect to X1 and X2 of each of the equations. Right, so we end up with four partial derivatives. So when you partially differentiate equation one, which is the partial derivative of y1 with respect to x1, we get two. And then when you get, uh, we calculate the partial derivative of y1 with respect to x2, we get three. Then we do the partial derivative of the second equation, y2, with respect to x1, we'll get eight x1 plus 12x2. And then when we take the partial derivative of y2 with respect to x2, we get 12x1 plus 18x2. Right. The next step will be to put the four partial derivatives in matrix notation. Right. So from the four partial derivatives, we can come up with a two by two matrix. Right. Um, where basically what is guiding the position of the partials is what we have in this two by two. So position A11 will be the partial derivative of Y1 with respect to X1. So what you can see here is that each position is guided by the number that is on the subscript, right? The first subscript basically tells you the equation you are working with. And then the second subscript will tell you the independent variable being differentiated with respect to. So when you look at uh, position A12, it means you are taking the partial derivative of the first equation with respect to the second independent variable. In this case, it's X2. When you look at position A21, you are taking the partial derivative of the second equation with respect to the first independent variable, which in this case is X1. So same applies with position A22, is the partial derivative of the second equation Y2 with respect to the second independent variable, which is X2. So you can arrange the four partial derivative in the two by two equation. 
The next step now will be to calculate the determinant of the Jacobian, right? So to calculate the determinant, we multiply the diagonal elements and subtract the product of the off diagonal elements, right? So in this case, when you multiply 2 by 12x1 plus 18x2, we get 24x1 plus 36x2. Then you subtract the product of the off diagonal elements, which is 3 times 8x1 plus 12x2. You get 24x1 plus 36x2, right? You open the brackets and simplify. And for this example, you can see that the answer will be that the determinant of the Jacobian is equal to zero. Right. So we are going to conclude that in this instance, the systems of the equations, they do not have a unique solution because our two equations are dependent on each other. They are dependent, right? Alternatively, you can closely look at the two equations and you can see that equation two is basically y1 multiplied by, sorry, y1 squared. So generally, when you are working with linear functions, no, man, no matter the number of equations that you have, as well as no matter the number of exponential variables that you have, right, from x1 up to xn, what you need to do is to take the partials of each of the equations with respect to each of the independent variables. Then you put them in a matrix. When you solve the determinant of that matrix, you should be able to conclude whether a unique solution exists or not. Right. In the linear case, what you simply did is we were able to arrange our system of equations in an AX equals to D format. And from there, we generated our matrix A, right? And when we calculate the determinant of the matrix A, we can also be able to conclude on the existence of a unique solution or not, depending on the value of the determinant. If it's not equal to zero, then we know a unique solution exists. Right. So what we are noticing is that that A matrix, which we see in the linear form, is basically similar to the Jacobian. Right? Where each position, your A11, will be the partial derivative, as I had earlier on explained. Right. So because of that, we see that we are using the same decision rule on our A matrix as well as on our Jacobian. When we take the determinant of the A matrix, we'll get the same answer or the same conclusion as when we calculate the determinant of the Jacobian. Right. So whether you work with linear or nonlinear equations, you should be able to make conclusion on the existence of a unique solution. All right, so using these two examples, I'm going to give you a chance to try them out, and then we can discuss them in our tutorial or on Moodle when we have our charts. Thank you.